Hello, in this video we're going to start by drawing this little shape here, this triangular shape. And we're going to be using the extrude tool to do that. Because extrude, as you can see from the picture, takes the profile and then extrudes it straight back, giving it some depth. So here's our shape. So we need to start a sketch. So I'm going to hit F6, bring us into an isometric. You can see that. Now as I go over my planes, I can see which plane I want to sketch on. So yeah, I'll sketch on that side. So I'm going to go there and click Create a Sketch. So now I need to start figuring out how I want to sketch it. And remember, in parametrics, it's all about your design intent and what might change later on. So when I'm looking at this, my dimensions are going to the centers of these circles. So I know that that's what I'm going to be dimensioning to. And it's symmetric. So I probably want to keep, for my origin here, keep it on both sides. And then I need to decide where do I want this? Do I want it up here? or at this center point, or at this center point, or at this bottom point. It really doesn't matter which one I choose. Um, I'm just going to choose this point right here. It seems to have a lot going on. It's lined up there, there, and there. So that might be a good spot to start. Um, I could also start with here. But I'll start um, with the center point here. So what I'm going to do first is draw some lines. Here's a nice little line here. And I can just make that coincident from that point to the midpoint there. So now when I drag this line you can see it's getting longer but it's still constrained equally on both sides. That's a really easy way to do it. Now I can draw another line from that center point straight up that'll give me the center of that point. So now I can draw some circles in. Make sure I get that green dot. See so from here I have a yellow dot and I'm showing it that it's coincident. If I go to the end, I can see that it's coincident to that point and I have the green dot. So draw it there and draw it there. So now I have some geometry. I want to keep keep adding things, but as I go I want to constrain them so that they're related to each other. And remember from the last video that I want to do all my constraints first before I start adding dimensions. So I'm going to use the equal constraint, that circle to that circle, and that circle to that circle. So now as I change these, they're all going to stay the same size. So now I can draw some lines. So start on that circle and come down here. And oh, there it is, tangent. I'll start over here to tangent, and I'll start here to tangent. So this point is not tangent, but that point is, that point is not, that point is, that is not, that one is. So that's why I can start making them tangent. So I'll go to tangent, that circle to that line, that circle to that line, that circle to that. Oh, that one, that one was already there, so it gave me an error. It was that circle to that line that I needed. So now as I move it, you can see all those lines are staying tangent. Now if you want to test it, the easiest thing to do is grab an endpoint of a line and move it around and see how it moves. If you grab a line by itself, sometimes you might not see where things go awry. So I have that, and I'm going to trim. I'm going to take out these insides of the circles, just to get it a little better. And these lines here aren't going to be part of my profile, so I'm going to select them, and they come over to here to my construction lines. So that just turns them this little dotted line. Um, so now I can do, now everything's moving the way I want it to. I have the shape I want. So now I can dimension. So dimension from this line to that point. Ooh, this is going to make it really small. Just double click the mouse to get out. And I really wasn't paying attention to how big that was when I started drawing, but you can see it, it's not, does it, it's not a big deal. So click that line, come down two inches, and that one. And right now that's giving me a radius 
because I picked on an arc. If I had picked on a full circle, it would have defaulted to diameter. I right click, dimension type, diameter. I know on this one I could have just easily told it to be a half an inch, but sometimes if the number is a, a weird decimal, it's easier just to right click than to try and divide it by two. So go here, one, and now you can see it just all changed its color to the fully defined. It tells me that it's fully constrained, so I'm done. I can hit finish, and then I can go come over to extrude. So for my first option, I only have options of distance to or between. I know a distance here, it's a quarter inch. So I'll put that in. And I can tell it which way to go. So do I want, do I want it to come towards me, to go away from me, to go halfway each way, or to go different distances one way than the other. For this part, I'll just have it come towards me. And I'll say OK. So now I want to do that slot. I can click on this face, create a sketch. So there's a couple ways I can do it. I can do circles there, and then draw lines, or I can do a rectangle and draw lines. Since this one I know where that center point is, I'm just going to start with a circle. So I'll just come up draw another circle draw lines then I'm going to go ahead and make those lines vertical I can draw those endpoints and see oh, that one's not staying tangent and neither is that one so go ahead tangent to there and tangent to there So now I can go to dimension, that point to that point, one, and across the diameter there to 0.5. And now it's turned all blue. I know it's good. I can finish, extrude. And since I had a solid profile on the outside and that solid profile, it wants to know what I want to do. Do I want to extrude this section between the two profiles or this section in here? So I'm going to click in there. And then ask me what I want to do. Do I want to union it? Do I want to add it to it? Do I want to subtract it? Or do I want to do an intersection and leave only what's left between the two? So I want to do a subtraction. And then over here, now it's asking me how far I want to go. So I want to go half a quarter inch all the way through it. So I'm just going to leave it there for now and say, OK. It goes through. That's great. What happens if I come back and decide, oh, really, I want this to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. So if I go to extrude 1, just double click on it, and change that number to 0.375, now you can see that slot no longer goes all the way through it. I'm just holding down F4 and rotating. So that slot isn't going through it anymore. So if I double click here, see, because I had that distance there that it defaulted to that and if the other piece went through it, it left it alone. <clears throat> so if I want this to go through and I always want it to go through, a better option would be to say all. That way it's going to go through the whole thing. Um, and all would actually, if it had multiple pieces or multiple different levels of things back here, it would go through everything through it. Or I could say to next. And that way it would just go through to the next surface. Or I could say to I can pick that back surface so that no matter how thick this becomes, it's always going to go to that back surface and say OK. So now if I change this and I made it 5, it's still going to cut all the way through. Still cutting all the way through. I can come back and make this 0.25. So that's where the, the power of the parametrics comes in is that you can define how things are going to act and thinking how they might change in the future and let it react accordingly.